Huh. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? This is Etho, and welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone 2. I've just been in a moment here, guys. I've been looking at things, trying to figure out the best optimal way of reaching the end game of our mod pack here. And I've spent like half an hour just looking through the list, seeing what everything requires. And I am dumbfounded. <laughs> I am like, oh my goodness. This is crazy. Kappa mode is nuts. So we made the neutronium compressor last episode, right? This thing here. I'm starting to panic a little bit. Uh, I figured out how this thing works. In order to create one of these singularities, you need whatever number it says here. So 49,626 blocks of iron to make one of these. Most of them are between 40 and 50,000. I don't know why it, it varies, but it's kind of interesting. Um, here's the thing, though. You can only put one stack of items in here at a time, and it takes like 49,000 or so. So one stack of items every tick. Um, it works out to like 30 to 40 seconds to craft each one, is what I figured out. And this is what we want. The Wand of Animation is our dream item in this mod pack. It, we need 45 of these Infinity Catalysts to create it, because apparently each of these is 11. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I thought Neutronium was the big uh, time sink here, but it's these things. Because each one requires the... Eternal Singularity, which is 33 of the other ones. So you do 45 times 33 times 30 seconds, and you're looking at about 10 hours to craft this thing. All right, if we only have one of these. So we should probably at least get two as soon as we can. And that's assuming everything goes perfectly is the other thing. So we got to also figure out... Like, how are we going to get a ton of EMC? You guys in the comments, you really want me to do... Oh, what's it called? Let's look at under block. We're just doing a little bit of, like, figuring out here together before we actually start doing stuff today. Yeah, so Ludocrite is 450,000 each block. That's worth quite a bit. There's a mistake in the mod pack where there's two recipes to make this one, right? And if you add up all the numbers here, it's about 450,000. But this one's a lot cheaper... And it only costs about 50,000 to make this. So you can craft it and then uncraft and then like turn it into EMC and then use that EMC to create these ingredients and, and craft another one. And you're getting about 400,000 every time you do that. So we could do that if we really wanted to. Uh, it feels very cheaty to me. And I'm guessing it got patched in later versions of this mod pack. I'm still using an old version uh, just so I can use this quest book that I like. But we'll put this on the back burner. If I get desperate, I'll do it. But I think we should try find other ways of generating EMC first. We have the Nether Star option. We can uh, generate RF tool worlds full of emerald blocks or some other type of block that's worth a lot. We could set up gajillions of cobblestone generators and use the octuple stuff, the stuff over here. We have 53 of them right now. Each one's worth 43 million. Um, once we get the Wand of Animation, we could just, like, use it on one of these and then spawn them in and we'll have EMC for days, right? It's just until we get the Wand of Animation, things are going to be tricky for us. So, yeah, I think we'll try getting Nether Stars going first off, but let's take it one step at a time. To get Nether Stars growing, we have to get a lot of Awakened Draconium, so we should set up a farm for uh, farming... Awaken Draconium. <laughs> my brain my brain farts happening much in head. Can't think. Okay, let's let's get to it here. So we want to maybe get some annihilation planes. We'll try to automate this if we can. Can I craft these? No we can't. I did not put a recipe in for him. Annihilation. I think we need four of these. Two, three, four for breaking the charged draconium blocks. Hopefully it works on them. It might not be able to. And what's the other plane called? I forget. The placement plane. What's it called? Formation plane? Sure. We'll get a few of these. Aha! Uh -huh. Ta-da! <laughs> Alright guys, here's the plan. This is what we're going to do. Uh, we built this machine together in the episode, and it took about 15 to 20 minutes of the video. It was the whole episode, basically, right? So I figure I'll just summarize it instead. That way we can do some other stuff today as well. Uh, but basically, this is for making the Awakened Draconium uh, automatically. 
Uh, so we place the charged draconic blocks in the space in these four spaces here, and then the annihilationist planes break them after they convert to awakened draconium, and they go into this chest. We we do that with the storage bus filter. It'll only accept these two block types. Um, so if it's charged draconium above the black plates here, it won't break them. All right, and then we pump it into our our ME system. A uh, couple cool things with this. So anything that that's put into this chest basically goes into our our machine, all right? So if we put this redstone block here, check this out. Aha! <laughs> Originally, when we built this, we were using TNT. That's why we built it over the void here in case there was an explosion. Uh, but then I switched over to a creeper trophy because you guys recommended this in the comments, and this activates an explosion when you right click it. Right, so we use that on the dragon hearts to activate them, uh, and we have to right click it, so we use an autonomous activator to do that, and we send it a signal using that redstone block here. It gets placed and then broken right away, which is kind of a cool trick. So in our recipe for doing this, over here, this is what we got. Four charged blocks, the hearts, 16 cores, and I added a redstone block just to trigger that device, even though it's not used in the actual making of the Awakened Draconium. Kind of a cool trick, I think. Uh, but let's just check this out. We'll see it working, and hopefully it actually works now. I had a lot of trouble building this. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, starter up. So it places the four. You saw the... You see the heart drop there. Creeper statue got activated. Now it's dropping the cores in. And hopefully it works. Yeah, it sucked them up. Good. Good, good. So then it does its little twirly thing for a few seconds here. I tried to build this in a way that we wouldn't have to use a timer. Um, so after this repeater activates, it goes through here, up this torch tower to this cable. The draconic cores stay in this chest until after the repeater goes. And then it activates this cable. Oh, taxes out of the way. <laughs> and puts the 16 cores in this hopper and they drop down. Um, we have to avoid blowing them up with the explosion. So it's very important we time that properly. Then after it converts, the annihilation planes put them into the chest here. And they go into the system. Now this is all good and stuff, except one problem with it, if we try to craft more than four at a time, uh, I found out it doesn't work. So we spent like 20 minutes in the episode building it, and then I was like disappointed at the end of it. <laughs> uh, but possibly... We need to find a way of automatically making one at a time. That would be the easiest way of doing it, and I think you can do it with an export bus, right? And a crafting card. All right, I think this might work. So we're going to put a crafting card in the export bus here. Oh, big giant leg spike. Is it going to do it? Is it going to do it? Please, please, please. Oh, it did it. It did it. <laughs> All right, so the stuff got placed in the chest here. Oh, that's what you get, taxes. You stood too close. <laughs> All right, good. Is it good? Did the cores drop in? They didn't. What what happened there? Um hmm. I don't know. It's almost like the signal didn't pass through for some reason there. Anyways, after this finishes crafting, we'll see if it goes again for another cycle. Because if there's no acceleration cards in this export bus, it should do it one at a time. If you add more acceleration cards, it'll try to do, like, more. Yes, very, very well said, Ethel. <laughs> All right. Enough rambling. Let's, let's get it done here. Okay, so we really want another cycle to happen without it glitching out here. Looking good. It's doing the cores this time. One thing that can happen, if Taxes goes in this space here, it can't actually place the redstone block. Maybe maybe Taxes messed it up. I didn't see. 
All right, I think it's good though. I think it's it'll keep crafting. So that'll auto craft uh, awaken draconium as long as we have the ingredients to do it. Once we run out, it'll stop. All right, very good, very good. So check it out. The device is gone. Never to be seen again. No, we moved it downstairs here to a spot that's a little bit more uh, permanent, right? <laughs> Had to rebuild it all. It kind of sucked. But uh, yeah, it's working good now. Made one more change to it. There, Like sometimes it would drop the draconic cores and sometimes it wouldn't. And I had figured I'd just have to add another repeater here with a longer delay. So it's at 32 ticks. If we set this one to 32 ticks, some, this statue would activate twice. And sometimes it was blowing up the cores. So, that's all good and stuff. So, the reason I did that is I was doing an experiment to, s to try to figure out why it would work and sometimes and sometimes it wouldn't. If you send this a quick pulse, this cable here, it doesn't always pull the items out. Just depends how the, the ticks line up. So if I spam this, eventually it'll go through probably. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you... Either got to get lucky with the timing, or you got to make the timing long enough that it'll guarantee it's going to happen. So that's why we set this to 32. 16 was too short. Oh, I was wondering where the, all the mobs are coming from. <laughs> it's like, uh, being a little bit careless here. A zombie jumped me earlier. Thankfully, it wasn't a creeper. Okay, so that device is working great now. I'm very happy with that. We do need some way of making charged draconium. Right now, I've just been doing it manually. So we're going to make a new thing here. We're going to say 4 equals 4. And then at our uh, capacitor bank here, we got to put the draconic blocks in it. It'll charge them. And then we've got to put them back in the ME system. So I see there's a cable here. Let's steal from here. And probably just run it up to a interface with our recipe inside. Hopefully that'll put the, the blocks in here. And then we got to pull them out when they are charged. Not before that. So we'll filter. And send them back into there. That'll work, right? Maybe. Probably got to attach to here. Wait, does that actually work? I don't know. Let's go try it out. <laughs> uh, charge... Oh, it must be, because that thing started running again. I think. Because it'll auto-craft them if it can. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Cool. Alright, so that's another thing done. Okay, guys. So next up here, let's try to upgrade our farm again. We have all these nether star seeds planted, but they're not growing. They're just sitting there doing nothing. We just have the one here that's actually active. Because we only had one awakened draconium block. Now we have more. So I think the easiest way to change this is going to be selecting it, right? Hopefully that worked. And where's the line? Over here is where they start. Yes, okay, that, that worked. Good. Then can we, can we do the right-click thing? Very good. Okay. Nice. I want this one back. Okay. Are they growing now? Yeah, look at that. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> we got to get more imaginary time blocks here, too. Uh, but that's going to make a huge difference with our EMC rates. I forgot you guys told me the range on these imaginary time blocks is more than one block. It's like five blocks or something. So every crop in this farm is uh, getting boosted by like four of them at least, right? Um, and now the crops are fully grown, like, all the time, and we're being a bit wasteful f with that. So we might want to change it, but I don't really feel like doing that right now. So, let's just do this. Always active. And then we'll go check out how, how quickly we're actually producing nether stars. It should be pretty decent. Oh, you know, I might need to speed upgrade this, too. It's like barely, barely able to get them out in time. Okay, let's head back uh, to our base. Can we use this thing? Is this the right tool? I have the flugel. Yeah, that works. Okay. So let's, ch let's check this out. Star. We are gaining them at about ooh, 20 a second or so. 
That's not fast enough. <laughs> Still not quick enough. It's good. It's a good start. It'll help. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. And uh, maybe I'll try to explain this a little bit better, just in case you're confused what we're trying to do here. So let's say we're getting 20 nether stars per second, which is what it kind of looks like here. That's going to be about 3 million EMC per second we're creating. We want to get enough EMC being produced per second where we can run hopefully two of these at least non-stop without any, any holdup, right? So let's say we're producing iron singularities. We can feed this thing one stack per tick, so let me grab my calculator here. That's going to be 64 times 20 times 2304. Oh wow, that's that's like 3 million on the dot. <laughs> so we could do, we could probably produce iron singularities non-stop with no no hold up. That's good. But a lot of these are cost a lot more than iron. So if we go to over to gold, it's like what is that? 7 8 9 times more expensive. And some of them are are worse than others like redstone's cheap lapis is cheap um actually most of them are around 2300 that's not too bad actually 36 okay so at 23 we're fine it's just like when we get the emeralds and stuff that we're gonna have a giant problem hmm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we might need more sources of emc or or create a world full of emeralds so we can get them easier sort of thing uh-huh. Regardless, uh, we do have another problem as well. So check this out. We can, if we have two of those compressors running, we can feed them two stacks per tick. And right now we're not producing anywhere near that with these current uh, condensers. We need faster ones. So we got to get the Mark IIs is our next goal here. Condenser. There's two versions. There's the Mark One, Mark II. Mark II, we have all the ingredients to do it except for these gems in the middle here. There's five different colors of gems, and they come from the Kepler planets in Galactic Craft. And you all know how fun Galactic Craft was. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I've been putting it off. Uh, so when we did the RF Tools uh, dimension creating, I kept my eye out, eye out for these uh, uh, Kepler material things. We have four out of the five right now, and I'm going to try and make the last one. We need the purple one still. But I think with this, we'll be able to hopefully not have to do Galactic Crafts. Let's see. Let's get a dimension built with these. We'll throw this in here. Give it that. What's wrong? Oh, it wants the shape too, doesn't it? Okay, I think we're ready to go. I, I put in orbs for the shape of the, the material. And this is ID8. So let's switch this over before I mess up again. Dial. Okay, we got our shield, just in case there's a giant problem, like we've had before. And let's go check out this world. So, I think it was green diamonds, right? Hopefully, maybe, we'll see. Do, 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 do. Oh, here we go, whoosh. Yeah, they're there, right there. Oh, and it's like a void world. <laughs> I don't know if I like that, but we got the magnet at least. And we can mine these, hopefully. Yes, awesome. And do they have EMC? They do. Okay, so that's all we had to do. We can get out of here. Does this work on its own? No, it doesn't. So I'm going to probably just use our other thing to get out of here. Go to the nether. Aha! Uh -huh. so that way we don't have to fly to the different planets to get the ores. We can just generate them that way. Uh, okay, so we got another world here with the yellow diamond orbs generating in it. Okay, out of all the worlds I've generated, I think this is the weirdest one I've seen so far. It's, it's like dark. I don't know if it's because it's nighttime. There's green clouds. There's snow slabs all over the ground. Perfectly flat world. And I was like, okay, there's nothing here. Where are the ores that we generated? So I started digging down. And I guess we're way up in the sky here. And it, there's a huge cave system in this world. So I was just checking it out. What I did different in this world is instead of just having one ore type, I tried to do two. So it's it should have the the red and blue diamonds in, hopefully. What is on the ground here? Is that sewage? 
Medium brine. Huh. Oh yeah, there's the there's the red diamonds. Okay. Let's take these. Uh, is there di is there a lava inside? I think we're fine. Okay. Let's uh, send those home. We got to find the blue ones too. So it didn't seem like there was actually any blue diamonds in that world. So let's check this out. This is the way I did it. Extract. I did two material ones and then one feature. Maybe I need like a feature for each of the material ones. So I should have put a feature here maybe. If it's possible. I don't know if it's possible or not to have more than one ore type. Anyways, uh, I got this thing running again. The scramblers. We got to try find the purple diamonds, right? So I'm hoping we get lucky with that. The researcher did not give us what we were looking for. And like I, I put some unknown dimlets in the researcher and we ran out totally of them. So this is our only hope now. <laughs> I don't see purple Kepler purple diamond anywhere in there yet. So we got to let it run for a while. Uh, I guess we'll try to generate another world. We'll just do the the blue diamonds. Oh, that's still in there. Okay, blue diamond feature giant orbs store. Blue diamonds. Man, we are so close, and yet we are so far. We just need the purple gems. That's what's missing in our recipe here. And this has been running. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting and waiting. We got the green ones, we got the yellow ones, but we just got to get lucky to get the purple here. They're only rarity too, so it shouldn't be like super impossible, right? But it's taking its time. These scramblers aren't exactly quick, even with three of them running. Show, yeah. Let's try to do some other stuff while we wait here, I guess. Um, we still got the, the IOTA quest line to finish. We're 94% done. Let's see if we can do this. Let's try make an airlock controller. Airlock controller. We can. Look how easy that was. Amazing. We need airlock frames. Nine of them. Hmm. Galacticraft stuff is the worst to make. <laughs> There's always like a million parts to it. Oh, and it doesn't have EMC. Oh, darn. Okay, let's make eight of these then. Eight of those. Eight of these if we can. Oh, we did do it. Okay, good. Frame. Uh, airlock frame. Now we should be able to do this. Oh, it makes four at a time. Whoops. Okay, we made a little bit extra. That's fine. It's all good. Um, that's done. We only got one quest left on this page. Turbine at the ready, but it is uh, whoa, <laughs> a little bit scary. We got... Eight different things we need to make here, starting with turbine housing, 49 of those, and 29 glass. So let's do this. And 29. Okay, so is that, are those two done? No. <laughs> what? Turbine. What happened there? Is it because we didn't put it in our inventory? Oh, it was. Darn. So we need more housing now. Turbine housing. this time we got both in our inventory so they both counted now so we need a turbine rotor shaft two of those and four blades okay most of these are pretty cheap and i no i think we needed four of these and two shafts okay is that done we got those done so now we just need the fluid ports bearing controller and ports turbine Ports, easy. Uh, bearing, get our fluid ports. So we just need the controller. The controller is a bit more tricky. So we need a reactor controller, which is missing steel for some reason. Here, let's grab this. We'll just do it in our inventory. Okay, put that back. One, two, three, four. Is that the right type of steel? It is not. <laughs> no. Wait, we can craft this. We have a recipe to craft it here. Still says it's missing steel, though. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. And just block that up. Okay. That's the old reactor that we're not using anymore. We'll just throw it in. Did I not get it? Wait, what? Wait a second. 
There we go. Now we got it. Okay. Let's just throw this in there. There we'll reuse and recycle whatever you want to call it. Sixth magnitude. Okay, so we need two of these. One, two. Good. Get those there. We have our turbine controller. This quest is done. This quest page is finished, guys. Iota is completo. Oh, and it gave us a legendary badge. Here we go. Just apples. Okay. I think this filled up again, probably. 300 out of 300. That's what I hate about this thing. It can only make up to a tier 3 storage, and it fills up so quick. Let's see if we got it, though. Uh, Kepler? No, we didn't. Darn. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Well, I think we'll uh, wrap up here anyways. It's about that time. Uh, we almost got the tier 2 condenser made. We did the Awakened Draconium and some other stuff today, so I'm happy with that anyways. And they'll give me a chance to AFK while the dimlets generate there. And hopefully we'll get the purple diamonds for next time. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching, as always, and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.